Hello, welcome to our second video on trig substitution, an example video. Um, we're trying to find out what is the antiderivative of 1 over x squared times the square root of 4 minus x squared. And we're interested in the area under that curve from 1 to root 2. So what we're looking at is a trig sub opportunity, but there's three different flavors of trig subs. When you have a square root, whether it's an enumerator, denominator, no matter where it's at, and it is of the format a squared minus x squared, um, your first step in the process of a trig sub is to choose the correct trig sub, and when you're in that format, you let x equal a sine theta. In this case, a is equal to 2. So you don't want to get this first step wrong because all the rest of the problem will fall down after that. So pick the correct trig sub the correct value of a as well and then in the second step is where you have to substitute for all the in individual parts in this particular integral there are three different terms three different parts and so we have the radical we have the dx and we have the x squared please don't forget dx it's very important so i just have them color coded here for you and we're not going to go find out what each one of them are we're introducing trig into the problem this problem has no trig in it at all but we're going to bring trig in, and it's going to make the integral a, a doable integral, believe it or not. <laughs> so what does dx get replaced by? Just take the derivative. Like when you do u substitution, you take the derivative to figure out how to replace dx. In this case, yeah, we just take dx here, take the derivative, and dx gets replaced by 2 cosine theta d theta, derivative of 2 sine theta. Uh, next up, we have x squared. Well, go back to x and square it. Square the 2 and square the sine. Then you'll have 4 sine squared theta. That's going to be replacement to the x squared. The radical, whenever you let x equal a sine theta, the radical becomes a cosine theta. But if you need to see the individual steps of how that works out, go ahead and replace x by a sine theta. You'll see that you end up with a cosine theta after, afterwards because you have a perfect square. So I've color coded here nicely, and now I'm going to go and replace the red in the numerator, the green and blue in the denominator. We've substituted for every term. Also with this step, we want to be able to cancel. And so the twos are going to cancel, the cosine thetas are going to cancel, and you're going to pull out that one fourth. And now it's our job to be able to integrate one over sine squared theta. And it might be difficult at first sight. The purpose was that we get, we need to be with an integral that we can now do, and off the top of our head, we don't know the antiderivative of 1 over sine squared. We can get there, though. You just have to be able to represent it in the right format to recognize what's going on. In step 3, we're, our job is to integrate this, and the reciprocal of sine, although it's rarely used, but we need to know about it, cosecant. It's one of the three reciprocal functions, cosecant, secant, and cotangent, and so yeah, 1 over sine squared is actually equal to cosecant squared. Okay, now you got to go back to first semester calculus, the, the AB calculus, and figure out, intro calculus, figure out that there, um, remind yourself, I guess, that there is a function out there who has cosecant squared in its derivative, not exactly its derivative, but in its derivative, cosecant squared is is some some functions derivative and our job right now is to find out whose derivative it is so back in the recesses of your memory or hopefully it's there if it's not then make sure it gets there cotan's derivative is negative cosecant squared theta so if you're trying to integrate cosecant squared then you should end up with negative cotan negative cotangent of theta we have found our antiderivative it's great now the task becomes, well, this is an antiderivative in theta. I can't plug 1 and root 2 into this. Those are x numbers. I have two options. I can change the x's into thetas by doing a limit switch. It's a definite integral. You have options. <clears throat> when you have an indefinite integral, you have no options. The only recourse is to appeal to the reference triangle to help you figure out how to change cotan theta back into x. Okay. We'll do both of these on the next slide. With each question, though, you only choose one. You choose whichever is most comfortable for you. My recommendation, walk down the limit switch route and see if it ends with angles that are nice unit circle recognizable angles. Okay.
All right, great. So our original integral, our substitution, the new integral in trig, the antiderivative, and now we're at the point where we need to decide. Are we going to do a limit switch or are we going to do a reference triangle? <clears throat> we'll walk down both routes. I like to organize it with a nice chart for my limit switch with my original x numbers, upper and lower limit, my, my substitution, in this case x is 2 sine theta, and so we replace x by root 2. Replace x by 1. Now when you solve for the trig function sine theta, you'll be dividing by 2. So there's an angle out there that you plug into sine and it spits out root 2 over 2. There's an angle out there that you plug into sine and it spits out a half. So our job to figure out now what those angles are. These are nice unit circle angles. So let's go with this method then. Um, pi over 4 for the, the upper limit and pi over 6 for the lower limit. You have to really uh, know your unit circle well so you can sort of grab that information and be able to quickly go on with the problem. All right, so fundamental theorem of calculus, plug these bounds in. These are your new theta bounds. You'll be done. The issue, though, is cotan theta. Like, you know, it's not too familiar to us. Like, I don't know what the cotan of pi over 4 is. I know about sines and cosines, and I know about tangent by dividing sine and cosine. I just don't know cotans off the top of my head. So to help myself out, <coughs> help you out, I recommend to uh, put it to what you're familiar. If you need to, go into sines and cosines here. And let's put a power over 4 in. Let's put a power over 6 in. The cosine of power over 4 and the sine of power over 4, they're exactly the same. They're both root 2 over 2. So that's going to be a 1 when you divide the cosine of theta by the sine of theta when, when theta is power over 4. But when you put in power over 6, though, they're different, right? The cosine of power over 6 is root 3 over 2, while the sine of power over 6 is a half. So what's going to happen there, the 2s cancel. And the uh, the cotan of, of, of pi over 6 is, is a root 3. Now, you had a negative 1 fourth outside. Don't forget that was a negative 1 fourth. And so we can just uh, maybe distribute the negative in, leave it as it is, or distribute the negative in. Um, if you have a minus b and you, and you multiply by negative 1, you get b minus a. So you could write this as 1 fourth times the quantity of root 3 minus 1. It's a good back of the book type of answer. You didn't have to do that. Okay. You could have appealed to the reference triangle. What is the reference triangle? Where does it come from? It comes from the original trig sub. If x is equal to 2 sine theta, then the sine of theta has to be x over 2. That's directions. The opposite should be x. The hypotenuse should be 2. In a right triangle with the best ang base angle theta, across from it should be an x. Hypotenuse should be a 2. The missing side is called the adjacent side here, and it happens to be the same radical that got this whole thing started at 4 minus x squared. You can find that by Pythagorean theorem if you need to. Okay, your antiderivative is cotan of theta. Now, if tan is opposite over adjacent, then cotan is the reciprocal of that, adjacent over opposite. So in this triangle, your adjacent is the rad 4 minus x squared, your opposite is the x. This is your antiderivative in terms of x. So what the reference triangle is for, it's to connect it back to x. So your antiderivative, negative 1 fourth cotan theta, is now negative 1 fourth with the cotan ripped out and its x version in there. And we go back to the original x numbers, upper limit of root 2, lower limit of 1. Plug those guys in. If you square root 2, you get a 2. But then 4 minus 2 is a 2. It's root 2 over root 2. That gives you the 1. When you put a 1 in, it's root 3 over 1. And so you're at the same place you were before, where you can uh, flip them and put the negative in as root 3 minus 1, 1 fourth times the quantity. So this is our second example, but both the first and the second example were type 1 um, trig subs where we have a squared minus x squared underneath a radical. And so in the in the next videos, I want to introduce the other two types, type 2, type 3, different tricks of. It isn't to let x equal a sine theta. It'll be let x equal uh, a tan theta or x equals a sec theta. And we'll work through the y and, the, and a, an example of each. And then that, that should be it. Um, if you have any questions, please don't be afraid to ask. I'm here to help. All right. Thank you.